It's here, it's upon us, and it's race day here at Barber Motorsports Park. Moto America Stock 1000 is about to hit the track for the first time today in racing trim. It's a breezy day, and as Roger just told me a moment ago, it is a no temperature day if you're from Alabama. Welcome, everybody, to Birmingham. I'm Robbie Floyd. This is the... The Moto America star, Roger Hayden. And, and Rog, you talked about it being a no temperature day because you can wear shorts, you can wear pants. For our fans here, you could not ask for a better it's day. Def definitely the weather is perfect this weekend. Uh, today it's just, uh, you know, it's warm enough for the soft tire. It's just great. There's a lot of fans here, and I'm excited for the first race. Um, what do you expect in the Stock 1000? Because looking uh, at it from the outside, looking in, we have Cam Peterson, the series points leader, has looked pretty darn dominant so far this weekend. He's definitely looked dominant this weekend so far. Even from the first practice, he's been really fast right out of the gate, and all the other guys have been playing catch-up. So we'll see once the race starts if Travis Wyman, Mesa, Corey Alexander, Michael Gilbert, if any of those guys can run with him. As we get ready to take off for their uh, sighting lap here in just a moment, let's send it down to our partner in crime down on pit lane. It's Miss Jamie Howe. Hello. So it's a beautiful time to start a race. These clouds have really thickened back up. So we've got nice, comfortable temperatures for everybody that's here on the circuit, all of the riders that are about to get going. I want to go back to Cam Peterson real quick. This morning in the practice session that we had for Stock 1000, he was one of the riders that did not go out with the rest of their class because they went out with super bikes. They're also doing that super bike class today for that race. And the problem for the rest of the Stock 1000 competitors is that Cam was able to pick up even more pace. They raised the ride height of that bike. He's even happier on it. That's exactly the same way that they're going to race that bike today. So he's even more comfortable than he was when we saw him qualify. Yeah, when you see that confidence out of uh, Cam Peterson and, and coming in and, and relaxing and looking and watching what everybody else does and knowing that Wyman, Mesa, Alexander, they got some work to do. Is uh, you know, you're the series points leader, and there's a reason because you've been out in front more times than Corey Alexander as we get ready to take off. Let's take a look at the championship points battle. It's still, a, you know, a 17 point margin that can change in a blink of an eye. Yeah, it can change really quick, especially this weekend with a lot of guys being quick. Um, you know, Corey's going to need to start winning races, though, to start getting that points. You know, the gap between first and second is five points. And, you know, Corey doesn't want to dig himself too big of a hole because there's not yeah. a lot of races left. Bit of a surprise, though, when you see Corey Alexander having to start from that second row. A little bit. It's a little bit better uh, for him this weekend, this practice this morning. He was a little bit quicker. So uh, it is surprising because he's been on the podium all weekend and he's a title contender, but he hasn't been here you know, in almost five years, and he's also never rode a 1,000 here before, so it's a little bit a uh, little bit more for him to get used to. Yeah, there's only been one week here that Corey Alexander has not finished on that podium as we take a look at our starting grid for the Stock 1000s. Mesa going to be on the inside. Hey, give Mesa a good start, good launch on that inside. You dictate the pace, just push everybody wide, and you go from third to first. I think somebody's going to have to get a whole shot over Cam Peterson. If not, if he gets in the lead, He's going to do what he did the last couple races, just kind of get in the lead and check out. Max Gerardo on row three uh, on the inside. And Chris Crossland, Joe Giannato, good results here recently uh, as well in the middle of row three. Hunter Dunham um, on there on the outside of four. Good to see him back in there in the mix looking for another top ten. Try to get in that top five this weekend. Jeff Pert looked quick at times uh, earlier in the uh, second qualifier. Danilo Lewis, we've seen him fast past couple of rounds a Brazilian and you talk about him being new uh, to Moto America new to this course where many of these guys have raced on this track before that's probably not the case for Danilo Lewis every track he's going to this year has been brand new for him so it takes a uh, you know he has to learn the track and I think that's one reason why he was so fast at the ridge because nobody else has been there before and uh, kind of made it an even playing field Cam Peterson, the guy to beat. He's coming off back to back to back to back victories. And there's one guy also that we haven't talked about is Michael Gilbert, the 55. He's going to start, what, middle of that second row. Here's a guy, you know, coming off of uh, back to back podium finishes, a second and a third place uh, the last couple of rounds between the Ridge as well as New Jersey. Really hadn't had any testing time, but he gets that one test day in New Jersey. Seems like they found something and uh, they got things going in the right direction for Gibby. Definitely, you know, even. Last weekend, you know, being on the podium, the race before that, last year he was on the podium here. 
So it just has to give him some confidence when you go to a track that you did well at the year before. It just, whenever you go into it, it just gives you that good feeling that you know you know the track well. Second place behind Andrew Lee here last year at Barber Motorsports Park. When the light turns out, it's time to go. No more red and a great launch by the Altus Not Suzuki. Not a good start by Travis Wyman. No, but look at the 45. If you were wanting to get in front of him in the front, is that? Great great start by Corey Alexander. Yes. He did exactly what he had to do. Yeah, Corey Moved Alexander. Moved all the way into second. Look for that Kawasaki. I was trying to figure out if it was Gilbert or if it was Mesa, and it was Alexander. You can see the different body types between Mesa and Alexander. One's in the five-foot range, the other one in the six-foot range. Looks like Mesa's trying to go up the inside of Gilbert into five. Didn't didn't make it. First lap of 13, and uh, it has literally been chasing the times of Cam Peterson so far in Stock 1000 uh, practice and qualifying this week at Barber Motorsports Park. Some cool ups and downs to this track. It's about a little over two and a quarter miles long. It circulates in a clockwise direction. 17 turns. But really, not many straightaways, not many flat parts in this course. There's a lot of ups and downs. You say this is a pivotal turn here. Yeah, this one here is a really difficult turn. When you get into here, you come up over this hill, and the rearing gets light. You see the bikes wiggling as they go over, and it's something these riders will have to deal with even more once the tire goes off. Turn around right, right, even further right into the last left-hand turn. That'll be turn 17. You see Peterson and uh, the Kawasaki not too far behind. I think this is everything you could ask for if you're Corey Alexander, don't you think? After not necessarily the best qualifying to come out here and put yourself behind Cam Peterson. Yeah, he's back one second, but he cannot let him get any further away. I just think once Cam gets gets going, he needs to, you know, go with him and, and stay within that one second and keep the pressure on. Although, although uh, Raj, it was the first lap. You see Cam Peterson like first, second, third, the fastest sectors overall. But then just behind, Corey Alexander, sector four, sector five. Maybe he had a little bit more confidence in those tires. He see where Peterson's at, and he can maybe push it a little bit more as we're taking a look at that battle uh, for Gilbert back there in third, Mesa in fourth of the 37. Michael Gilbert's actually had a good first lap here, making up a couple spots. And that's what we expected more of out of Michael Gilbert at the start of the season, where he started uh, last year so well uh, up there near the top of that podium. This year, struggling to make the podium, but has done that in the past two rounds, prior to that, he only had one podium finish at Road America 2, where he finished third. Stefano Mesa's missed the last couple of weeks where Gilbert's can turn it on. We haven't seen Mesa. Let's quickly go down to Jamie Howe. And Michael Gilbert says he's reached a point in the season where they, he feels like they really have a bike that he's won with now. He feels like it's his motorcycle. Anything that happens out on the racetrack, he feels like will be a result of what he as a rider is able to improve on. This morning in the practice session, he was the rider that did the full race stint. So he did 14 laps, uh, 13 plus one, to get in to make sure that he has a good solid race bike underneath him. And knows where that tire is going to be at the end of the day as well, Raj. And we didn't see that out of everybody else. Nope, and that's when the, it counts. The last five or six laps, once those tires go off, it's going to be really important, especially because he's going to be in that battle for the podium. And you know, see Cam Peterson that lap pulled out, you know, to second and a half lead. So they're going to not let him keep pulling away six tenths a lap. We're sharing the wealth though on some purple times. Again, we talk about purple on our timing and scoring. It means the overall best, but. Now I'm seeing more and more purple for Cam Peterson. I do see a quickest sector five for Michael Gilbert. Um, Corey Alexander has the best trap speed. Now the speed these guys are turning, just shy of 150 miles an hour, 147.3 by Corey Alexander the time before. So you can't let Peterson get away. But again, there's second, there's third, there's fourth. These guys are still racing for those podium spots. And you can see that uh, Michael Gilbert's closing up on Corey and uh, he's bringing Stefano Mesa with him. And those are two guys that are, you know, used to racing each other, had, did last year, got together uh, several times. Jeff May, the only one, you know, I'm surprised. Where's Jeff May this weekend? Uh, he, he's typically here at these rounds. I sure wish he was in the mix because, you know, he always throws it in there as well in his Kawasaki. Looking at the field, you have uh, Suzuki of Cam Peterson, the 45 out in front now, another purple, a 125.59. He's a half a second faster than Corey Alexander that last lap on a Kawasaki. The Kawasaki of Michael Gilbert uh, in third, Stefano Mesa on a Cowie, Travis Wyman, the BMW in fifth. And how about it, Ashton Yates on the Honda for the first time. We're seeing him up there near that top five, and that's an old bike. 
Um, you can't teach an old dog new yep. tricks. He's and, looking fast. And Ken Peterson actually, you know, he's broke the overall track record already th this weekend, and now he breaks the race uh, le record by half a second. So, uh, so not even close. I mean, he's just smashed killing it. it. Before it was Andrew Lee had it at a 26-0, and Ken Peterson's running 25-5. So a half a second. Let's send it down to Jamie Howe. Well, if you're looking for a rider to follow, somebody to really latch on to, it would be Stefano Mesa certainly in that running. Remember, he hasn't run the last couple of races because it was just too far. He doesn't have the budget. He's not a full-season team, but he has spent the last month on the road doing all of the regional races he could to earn enough money to be able to come and even ride here at Barber Motorsports Park. He showed up. It was up in the top three, the first practice session, the second, and the third, started the race in the third position, and he changes his own tires when he comes into pit lane. So. <laughs> Certainly a small budget, but a lot of drive behind him. Yeah, we've seen that. We saw it on MotorAmerica.com, and they posted it on Twitter and uh, Instagram and just showed, yeah, he pulls off. Roger, you were impressed how he goes so fast out there on the track and be a top qualifier and then go back, throw his tires on, get back out on the track and does it. I heard somebody point out on social media said, oh, it's not because he can't afford somebody to do that. He's just so particular. I promise you, Stefano Mesa would love to have someone change the tires for him in between. Look at Ashton Yates. He's he's putting it in there, and that's it's a battle. Actually, might be uh, Gerardo in six now. That Gerardo's trying to work his way up through. He gets by Ashton Yates, and he has Travis Wyman just in front of him on the BMW. So Yates actually drops back a spot that last lap. And now, what's Gerardo going to do? We've seen him as of late, you know, starting to turn it on. And he's been fast on the 141. That was a little bit quicker than Travis Wyman, so if he keeps taking, you know, that big gap out of him each lap, he'll be on him before the end and, you know, be trying to get in that top five. Gerardo on the Kawasaki currently sits uh, sixth in championship points coming off of that DNF at the last round, but he got 11 points, which is good enough for a top five uh, just before that. This is the race for ninth place. Uh, Joe Giannato on the 48. Danilo Lewis, the 94. Stefano Mesa is all over Michael Gilbert for that last podium spot. And that would be that uh, third, fourth battle. You're looking uh, through the field there. And they're only eight tenths behind Corey Alexander. In that lap, they were a little bit fast. There Corey was a little bit faster than those two. There we are looking at that race for uh, second, third, and fourth. It's going to be a good one. Good to look back through the field as well. Danilo Lewis leading that trio of riders. So Stefano Mesa, as uh, Jamie pointed out, having to ride the regional races, and that's how he's making his money. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19, he lost his day job in North Carolina. And you see a big wheelie out of the cow. He looks over to the side. He's trying to drag race down that straight, trying to grab enough power as they head into that museum turn, not able to do it and play and follow the leader. And you better hope that guy in front of you is on a good line or it'll sometimes take you the wrong direction. One thing these guys do that you don't, you know, they don't want to start going back and forth and slow each other up and let let Corey pull away. Yeah, sometimes the guys will tell you they'll tap on the back of their helmet or the back of the bike, and there goes Stefano Mesa. Mesa 37 goes underneath and kind of backs it into that left-hand turn. Mesa up a position, going to move him into third, drops Gilbert back to fourth. Next up is Corey Alexander, the 23, and that's something that you know, Mesa, Gilbert, they've been in that second, third position quite often last year, chasing Andrew Lee. Haven't seen it quite as much this year. It's been Corey Alexander's been the new Mesa and Gilbert. And Stefano Mesa looks like he had a lot of, uh, I mean, he just did a 25-2 that lap. He was four tenths quicker than Corey Alexander. So he's going to, you know, he might be able to pull Michael Gilbert up there and have a three-way battle for second, third, and fourth. And Mesa had the overall quickest in sector four. So you see purple. Times for him, a personal best when he was in sector five, so he likes the back half of this lap. You're looking at the different lines. Mesa's been here many times. You know, Mesa from North Carolina, not too far. He's been racing the series for quite some time and probably runs regional races here when he can as well. Corey Alexander, a New York guy, and he is closing He's in on him. fast. Is Corey having problems or is it Mesa going that much faster? This looks like, you know, Stefano Mace is just keeping the same lap time pretty close. The last lap, you know, Corey's best is a 26-1. The last lap, he was a half a second slower than that. 
Is it the case of Corey trying to manage those tires? Because I, I see Mesa w wiggling around a little bit. I think he's putting the pressure on him. We've seen Corey Alexander before, especially in the Hono Superbike when they're racing with the Superbike Cup, where he's had a little bit more tire than, say, Cam Peterson at the end of the race. He, d he is one of those guys we've seen all year actually get stronger as the race goes on. Managing tires is good unless the guy behind you is pushing and he hasn't enough left at the end as but well. I don't think he's trying to manage his tires in a 13 lap race, especially whenever you're a guy that needs to win. Even with that softer option, the, the question mark of does he know that that soft can last that long? We're hearing other guys in other classes having to go back to the hard tire because it is cooler than it has been before, especially in years past. Oh, somebody down. Looks Walker like 221. Sip. Having to regroup and let's see what happened. Going into turn five, just got in a little deep on the inside. Oh, man. God, luckily, whoever he hit stayed up on two wheels. Yeah, Walt Sip uh, got into the back end. He got to that inside and pinched off a little bit and had nowhere to go. But, I mean, dude, that's a pretty strong rider. Whoever that was, I wasn't looking for him, but whoever that was just in front. Stefano Mesa, that last lap, 25-8. That's solid. That's only three tenths off the best lap of the race uh, by Cam Peterson. His fastest lap of the weekend. That was three tenths faster than Peterson was that last yeah, lap. Yeah, well, Peterson has a four second lead and he's just maintaining right now. So you got to pick your battles, right, Roger? Yep. I mean, uh, Cam Peterson's out there managing the, the speed he has to win this race. That win would be a second place for Stefano Mesa. He's currently in third, but it'll feel like a win. If he can get by Corey Alexander and take one more spot up on that podium, he undercuts him there just a little bit, using maybe a little bit more on that tire. Definitely on that edge. The 98 was the bike that uh, Sip clipped earlier. So great job by uh, Jeremy Simmons out of California Impact Racing. Boy, he got some impact then. Five laps to go. I mean, you blink your eyes and this race is over with. I mean, it, it, it feel like a super sprint. It feels almost like a super pole kind of deal. Michael Gilbert still just one second back from this little group in front of him. He's going to have to start finding a couple tents here and there if he's going to want to close up. And actually, it looked like... There goes Mesa. Mesa once again to the inside. It's not going to happen there. But you knock on the door, maybe get in the head a little bit of Corey. And Corey gives him a room. He doesn't close that door. And now it's going to be a drag race down this little mini straight. Michael Gilbert's going to love this, them going back and forth yes. and slowing each other down. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Corey, I was surprised, didn't close it off, but he felt like he had that speed, and, and he did. That power of his bike was able to keep him out in front. Don't know that you're going to try and pass over there in that museum turn. Now, this could be a passing opportunity. A couple of places here, especially in the sweeping right, and that last left-hand turn usually is set up coming down into turn one, but you got to get a good ride heading to that last turn, Raj. Especially here, you can set up a guy here as well. If he drifts up wide, you can kind of keep it tight. He undercut just a little bit there. Going a little bit tighter there. And now setting up for this last left-hand turn coming down the front straightaway. He's going to try and get into that draft. Just behind, look at him, and he's just, he's getting, he's getting on the throttle every he can, but that front wheel keeps climbing. Does what do you do in that situation? Just lean forward a little well, bit more? You can also drag your rear brake a little bit. That'll uh, keep it from wheeling. But he and definitely gets a good run, and he's a lot smaller than Corey, so he yep. should have you know, a little more top speed. But we've seen it. When he's on the throttle, he's lifting the front end way, way too high. Look at him. Look that at run that. he gets up, up for over the hill. Jeez, look at that run out. And now back it down into five. This is a great opportunity. Diving underneath a little bit. Again, there's one. He can drag race him. He's not going to do it here, though. Corey got the power down really well. And he does good coming out of five, doesn't he? Cam Peterson's checking out. I mean, he's got a, a six-second lead almost on these two. But look at Gilbert starting to get in yep. the picture again with four laps to go. He gained a couple tenths the last lap. Look at the 55, the third rider in your picture on that Kawasaki, closing it in. Uh, the Michael Gilbert racing Kawasaki trying to close into Stefano Mesa just in front of him on the 37, the 23 of Corey Alexander, ride HVMC. Hudson Valley rider still, look, he's looking good there. He's doing just what he needs to do, getting a little wide. You saw the foot slip a little bit, maybe looking for some traction. Looks like he was a little wide there. Yep, and, and it's going to give a good drive by Mesa here. You see coming down that straightaway, he's getting in that tuck. No wheelie. Well, a little bitty of wheelie of a wheelie there. I, I think Mesa's going to set him up this lap coming up turn four. I mean, he was a lot faster that last lap. 
So let's look at it. Here's three. Yep, driving up over this hill. Might be too far back now. There it is. We've seen what it was made last year, I think, yeah. in there. Ran off into the grass just on exit there. And there he goes, setting up into five, into the left. He's going to back it in. He's too far behind. But still, he, he got a good drive. He a little bit closer. He got I mean, a good drive, though. I mean, it's not like he lost ground and take no, a different line. he makes line. up a lot of ground. You can do something different than the guy in front of you. I mean, who knows? Anything can happen. He makes a mistake. You put yourself in a position to make the pass. I've had many a championship rider say you're not going to pass anybody following the exact same lines as the guy in front of you. Go Earl Hayden mm -hmm. tell you that, you know, a time or two, you're not going to pass following him. Stefan is really putting the pressure on here. They're coming into traffic as well. That could play a factor with two and a half laps to go. Cam Peters, I mean, you can't even see him. Yeah. He's six Michael seconds Gilbert's up. Michael falling back, too. Look at this. Look at how it's not one or two. It's There's three two. riders here. This could get ugly over there in one, two, and three, can it? I mean, they're going to catch them right about right. that time. There goes our leader. They're going to catch them into three. And both those guys able to get by, but he's still got two riders in front. Mesa losing a little bit of ground, and that's going to hurt Mesa there, isn't it? It's going to really hurt Mesa. The Purple People leader just in between them and driving out. Corey going to catch him at a perfect time. Mesa's going to have good on exit, but now he's going to have one rider to deal with, and he gets by on the straightaway. But he lost a bit of time. He lost a lot of time. Now he's going to have to really, you know, Fight to get back it. what he lost. Yeah. The other parts of the track, which could make mistakes. Look like Corey might have got him a little deep into five. He did, and that's going to help Mesa a little bit. Corey doesn't know if he made it through as well. You know, so now you're always guessing because you're the first one in the group that comes through him. Mesa looks really comfortable over there, too. Like he's got the, you know, those kind of blind sections as you head downhill there. He looks like he's really got things lined up. A little wiggle for Cam Peterson. We'll see him in the Hunter Superbike class today. And the way he's riding this stock 1000 bike, don't count him out. If he, he might even get a top five the way he's running right now. I know it sounds crazy on a but stock he bike. He was six this morning. Yeah, it, it, anything can happen. And it, the confidence he has right now and being able to run that Alta Suzuki, I mean, no, Haggerty and Tucker Rocky. He's really looking good. That race behind him as he takes the white flag down the front straightaway. Let's find out that race for second place. They'll be yep. coming back uh, about seven seconds later. Stefan Mesa is still not, I don't think, close enough to make that pass into five where he's really strong, but you know he's going to be pushing hard. There's the leader. Seven seconds or so behind should be second place. There it is, the second and third rider in the picture. Corey Alexander, the 23 out of New York. North Carolinian Stefano Mesa. Mesa going inside there, back it in. He's got to do it on this lap. It's a white flag, last lap. For, oh, man. Corey's getting a little bit of a wiggle. Look, good drive for Mesa. Mesa's really setting him up. Look at this, Roger. Drag race. And he has position. Whoa! Oh. And shut it down is Corey. So his next part, I think he's going to try to get a drive through the chicane and go up the inside out of 12 where we're seeing him pass Michael Gilbert. Mesa on the 37 thought he had the pass, and that's the never say die attitude of Corey Alexander on the 23 and Look second. Mesa putting it to it. Corey using all of that track. Here comes Mesa. Got the hard left. Now he's got to set up in the big sweeping right and or the left hand turn last turn. He's going to win this thing. Peterson call it. Give him the checker. Coming down the front of straightaway, and we better have some cameras to look back to on that race for a second. Peterson's going to win this thing by about seven seconds. There's that race for the lead. Look at Mesa in the hard left hand turn. get a good run. Can he get that draft? Can he oh, get the run it. and a big wiggle? Mesa goes to the inside of drag race to the finish. Stefano Mesa does it by .012 seconds over Corey Alexander. Wow. What a last lap, by, or last two laps by Stefano makes that lappers messed him up, but he put his head back down and uh, caught right back up. Gilbert's going to finish second. We still haven't seen fifth. There goes Travis Wyman coming across in sixth on his BMW. Gerardo in sixth. Wow. Ashton Yates with a fine finish in seventh on his Honda. And the 19 coming across of Hunter Dunham does to get another top 10 in eighth place. Hunter Denham ties his best finish of the year. That's his third eighth place finish on the season for the 22-year-old out of Georgia. But 
What do you think of Cam Peterson? I know we didn't talk about him a bunch because there was a race going on and he he, he really wasn't in it. He was just out there making laps, it looked like. And seven seconds ahead of second place that were giving it, I mean, fits. That was, that was a great race for second. Really good. Look, Stefan, yeah, look how so happy he is. he's so happy for second place. That's like a win. That's why I said he, Cam was a cut above. He knew it, you know. He was racing for second. But also, he was going to be so disappointed if that lapper cost him a, a yeah. chance to even fight for second. You know, that's why you never give up. And what do you think about 23? Corey Alexander not giving up after it looked like Mesa dove underneath going up to the museum turn or, or to turn eight. Because that's a, that's a sketchy that's turn. A, that's a fast. Look at this. You want know, to talk about a photo finish? How close is it? There's Alexander on the near side, Mesa on the far side. You can see the, the rubber uh, width. I mean, yep, literally the barely. width of that Dunlop, the difference. And again, everything we say is unofficial, officially unofficial. I want to say that. And uh, timing and scoring does have a better and a, a better slow motion camera. So they will see it. But I, it looked like even with our eye just off center, it looked like Mesa nipped him just barely at the line. <laughs> and once again, Cam Peters, a little wiggles coming down there and getting a Round of applause from the uh, the grid crew and uh, his his posse. And you know what? They got to get that bike cooled down. They got a Honda Superbike uh, race they've got to do. I mean, throw the fans on it. You know, uh, kudos to Stefano Mesa, but also kudos to uh, Corey Alexander. Oh, he that never was a gave hell up. of a run. I mean, he fought till the end. And there could only be one winner, and the same thing goes for second and third. And and uh, that was about as close as you could ever ask for. And you know what? The Alexander crew giving him uh, props as well because that, they're friends off the track. You know, everybody gets along with each other off the track, but uh, neither rider gave each other quarter. You're right. That pass going into turn eight, you know, that Stefano Mesa tried on the last up. That is a fast, yeah. fast section. You see more problems probably there than anywhere where you get it wrong all by yourself. <laughs> Try doing it with another guy, you know, stuffing you from the outside. Looking at the tire now, too, because uh, is this the rubber they're going to go back to later on in the Honda Superbike? The answer, possibly. Yeah, highly possible. As fast as he was out there then, there is your official uh, or official finishing order. Danilo Lewis in ninth, just behind uh, Hunter Dunham. Ashton Yates, the 22. Good to see him with a, another strong finish, seventh place, and finished outside the top eight all year, I believe. Uh, coming off of that fifth place last week in New Jersey. Another Dunham in there. John Dunham back in 16th. Good to see him. But you see a smiling Cam Peterson there on the right. And the South African really looks good. And, and not only that, you get 25 points for first place, 20 for second, 16. He gained another nine points on Corey Alexander. That's so He's got over a full race. Yeah, and you get you know those 25 points for a race win. You have that one race advantage going to that final race at a Laguna Seca. Boy, it can take a lot of that pressure off the shoulders. Let's go down track side. The 45 was untouchable today, Jamie. And for Cameron Peterson, it is his sixth win so far in the 2020 season as he advances this points lead to be able to control the race from start to finish the way you did. What confidence does that give you for the Superbike race to follow? Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for that Superbike race. You know, uh, my goal already hasn't changed. I still, I still want to try to get that top five, you know. So, uh, yeah, that's my goal, Superbike race. We, I've got some, some ideas I want to do with the motorcycle for in between races. Um, you know, towards the end there, it, it started falling off to uh, a little bit. So uh, I'm so happy though. You know, I absolutely love this place. Every single lap, every single corner I do, I've got a smile on my face. Uh, um, and, and yeah, I, I can't thank the whole team enough. You know, they've, they've given me an absolute machine once again. And um, yeah, I'm having fun. And, and uh, thanks to all the fans. It's pretty cool having you out here. I know you haven't had too many events here. So thanks for coming out and uh, look forward to the next one. Congratulations to our Sock 1000 race runner, Cameron Peterson. Yeah, smile on his face the entire time. I'm, I'm quite sure that uh, Mr. Nassani and the Altus Motorsports crew, including Melissa Paris, is uh, his lead mechanic. She's probably smiling that whole time. Let's go back down to Jamie. Stefano Mesa, he started the race in that third position. He ended up in second. You put the pressure on the entire race. What gave you the confidence to make that move right at the end? 
Uh, I mean, it was a pretty good race. Uh, we got me and the team got the bike pretty dialed. Mike Fitzgerald did a great, 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 great job setting up the bike, and we're just working away the whole weekend. And uh, my plan was just to try and hang on to them. And uh, the bike was feeling so good that I just started to do a couple moves here and there, and uh, I was able to hang with Corey and did a did a few moves in the last lap, close one going back into the museum corner, but. We made it stick over here in the last in the last stretch, so I'm happy. I'm glad to bring a result back to the team. My dad, my mom, Mike, Mike, Mike Fitzgerald, Mike Golden, my girlfriend, everybody put so much support into this. So my hats off to you, all you guys, and thank you. You definitely did more than hang. Congratulations. Thank you. Now I'm gonna keep sticking it to him. I would love to see him out there on the 600. <laughs> He's got the bike in the pits and. Uh, he says we'll see it probably at Indianapolis. But on the 1,000, man, what a fight he had with Corey Alexander and Michael Gilbert. Remember, he was battling Michael Gilbert as well. Corey Alexander, I know he's he's not going to be happy with the third place, but he gave it hell even there when it looked like he was past going into the museum. And let's not forget, he got himself into that position with that fantastic start, making that move early on. How did you manage the pressure for so long? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I saw my board was just uh, – plus five, plus point five, plus point five, plus point five, and uh, just kept my head down, but uh, our, our tires started to fade towards the end. Um, either way, you know, it's uh, it's been a long time since I've been here at Barber. It's my first podium here. I've been racing for a long time, and uh, and so just happy to be up here. I have to give a big shout-out to my guys, Chris, Richie, DJ. Uh, worked really hard for me just to get us here. We've been struggling a little bit this weekend, and uh, my allergies are killing me, so my, my face is all stuffed up. But uh, otherwise, shout-out to Iconic Motorbikes, Ride HVMC, Hudson Valley Motorcycles, uh, Rye Helmets, Alpine Stars Leathers, uh, New Rage Cycles, Trinity Construction, just everybody that supports us. Uh, thanks, everybody. Thanks for everybody coming out. Appreciate it. Maybe the first podium here at Barber, but it's the eighth of the season. Nice job. Solid run by Corey Alexander. You can see the disappointment or hear the disappointment in his voice and uh, see it in his face. And he can be proud, though. I mean, he he gave it fits the entire race. The tire just wasn't quite there at the end. Travis Wyman didn't have the start he wanted, but Cam Peterson got out front just like we, he yep. needed to do. Got the start he wanted, and uh, you know that's the last time they've seen him. <laughs> Literally. Until they got the park for me. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, Roger. Had over a second lap, and that's about as close as anybody would get. Uh, Corey Alexander didn't see that, but it, yeah, when you're seeing plus five, plus five, that's that's not so hot. And uh, you see Stefano Mesa get by Michael Gilbert, and he had one more guy that he needed to catch up to, but that's Corey Alexander. Look at this run. He actually had to catch Corey twice because you know the yeah. lapper with a couple couple go let Corey make a gap. This was on the last lap, trying to make it on the museum corner, but Corey. Stayed on the it. Breaks. He stayed on it. And the guy who really didn't ever let off of it is uh, Cam Peterson. Lap times, even that last lap, a, a 126. So even till the end, I think he's he's wanting to see what those tires can do. Probably it's probably a great test for him for the Honda Superbike. Keep pushing till the end as we take a look at the points in the championship now after the first of two days of racing here in Barber Motorsports Park. They get another opportunity tomorrow and it is now a 26 point advantage. And again, you only get 25 for a win. So a full race advantage for Cam Peterson, Ori Corey Alexander, Michael Gilbert back there in third. <laughs> 